Hey, welcome back, I'm your favorite dysfunctional scientist, and today we're going to talk about the potential sentience and consciousness of the tiny human brains you can grow in a literal jar if you want to. Brain organoids are made from stem cells. Essentially, if you take a stem cell, you can induce it to become pluripotent, which is what we would think about of embryonic cells. Brain organoids were invented roughly a decade ago now. They're made by taking a stem cell, sometimes embryonic stem cells, or sometimes fetal brain tissue, and encouraging them to grow into a brain while disembodied. These guys have amazing medical potential, but one of the things that people figured out about them pretty quick is that you could use them for computation. Along with the rise of AI, people have been trying to combine them with AI, and they've done a pretty good job of it. The benefit that literal human brains have over other AI models is that they exhibit randomness. Not only can they perform a task, but they can learn to perform it. In 2022, Cortical Labs shocked the world when they claimed that they have sentience. The most basic definition of sentience would be the ability to react to stimuli, the ability to have an experience. This concept is often confused with consciousness. Consciousness is the perception of self, and it's a really difficult thing to get a hold of. Essentially, if you want to be considered conscious, you have to understand that you are separate from others. This is why the test that they've used for decades has been whether or not you can recognize yourself in a mirror. Turns out even fish can do that. Yes, fish are self-aware, and I'm kind of upset about it. I thought fish were the only thing I could eat without feeling guilty, but apparently, nah. What Cortical Labs did is they taught them to play Pong. If you grow brain organoids in isolation, they tend to atrophy for not just the hypoxia issue because they do not have a circulatory system unless you give them one or put it inside the skull of another animal so they have one. But they also need something to do, something to learn, just like your brain. Imagine your consciousness just being dumped into a tub. The tub is dark, has no stimuli. It's not really going to do very well. What they demonstrated by having these guys play Pong is that they're better than AI at learning to play it. And they get better at it. This, of course, was rather shocking and had ethicists concerned. The fact that they're able to make decisions, learn, take in stimuli, and then use it to perform new tasks does demonstrate a degree of sentience. As far as the concept of self, they essentially drop them in the literal matrix. If they were to have a thought about it, all they would know is Pong. That is their entire world. Now, a Swiss company, Final Spark, took this to a whole new level. They demonstrated that you could not just embody a disembodied brain in game world, but you could embody it with more complex methods like our friend the butterfly. That is a butterfly being run by human brain computers. This demonstrated that the little brains were capable of understanding a 3D world, and they're also capable of working together. They have 16 brain organoids to a chip, and they work together and learn together. The longest they've been able to be kept alive was about 10 months, and that just works by cycling oxygen and nutrient-rich liquid around the brain organoid. It's essentially just diffusion, which really is not all that different than how you get nutrients to your brain. You just have a circulatory system that helps out with it. So you could use the tiny human brains to do computation if you wanted to for about $500 a month. You can also hop over to their website and watch them think in real time, which I will admit is a bit disturbing. Final Spark did launch an international campaign with a bunch of different research groups to focus on different aspects of the utilization of the tiny brains. I have chatted with them a bit about it, and I have kept asking them if they have assigned these guys to an LLM yet, because I really want to talk to a brain organoid. I've never gotten a yes or no. They just kind of skirt the question and the answer. I am continuing to keep up with all of those research groups that are utilizing them, and as those papers come out, I will continue to let you know here. I will also post all papers that I can in the description of every video, so you don't have to believe me, you can read it. There have been some pretty interesting papers coming out, utilizing them with AI. They're very adept at understanding human speech. They can even differentiate between one researcher and another based on voice, which is something that an AI can do, that is true. But as of currently, brain organoids learn faster, which is not particularly surprising. I've always been a proponent of biosimilar technology. Evolution has had millions of years, in fact, potentially four billion years to get where we are today. Why should we try to reinvent the wheel? Why don't we just use the wheel? Which brings us to the concerns of ethicists. Now, I have had 
the luck of chatting with a lot of these research groups, and early on when they were claiming sentience, it was really exciting. They were totally leaning into the spooky aspects, but then everyone else started to think about it. We have had groups putting them in charge of robots. I love the freaking spider robot, okay? We don't know how much consciousness these guys could actually have. We know that they match the electrical signals from a baby brain quite well. Some have said that they can't technically be conscious, not in the medical terminology, because they don't have a sleep-wake cycle. They lack a brainstem, and brainstem is necessary for there to be a difference between awake and asleep. But there has been efforts to give them a brainstem. We also do know that if you take just human neurons and grow up a mouse with human neurons in them, they are smarter. When we put them inside of the brains of rodents, we know that the human architecture is different. We don't know exactly what that looks like from the perspective of being that mouse. I've even read these guys being referred to as subhuman in terms of the ethics of biotechnology, and that also feels a little bit weird. Scientists have been trying to outline where the limits are, because this is such a new technology. There's not really a place where we can say where consciousness has been reached, and unfortunately, if we ever reached consciousness, we would have a very hard time identifying or accepting that we actually created consciousness. So there could be suffering occurring within our tiny brain friends that we wouldn't even be able to perceive. Ultimately, we don't really have a good answer for it. It will be interesting to see what research comes out in the next 10 years, because things are moving very quickly right now. Are you carrying out a...